Um, I want to move us a little bit into discussing the global shapers that Aryant mentioned when we were starting off. And uh, to my understanding, Global Shapers is a largely social organization that helps people that are less privileged. So could you just tell us briefly about what work the Global Shapers does? Sure. Sure. So essentially, the Global Shapers started, I think, more up just under a couple of decades ago now. So it's led by this organization called the World Economic Forum. It's the same group that organizes the Davos Summit every year. Uh, so it's sort of a affiliate of that that they kind of administer. Um, but it's largely self-organized in that every city is supposed to have its own hub um, with, say, 20 to 50 people selected to be part of that hub. And I think, you know, there's thousands of cities that do. Like, we're not just talking big cities like Agda Delhi, but even like Gaia has a hub now. Um, so the objective of any hub is to basically um, use the SDGs or like the Sustainable Development Goals as a framework to effect change in the city that they're a part of. Now, I'd heard a lot about hubs in other cities that were doing amazing work, etc. So when I ended up with Calcutta as my sort of main base of operations, um, I thought it would be a great way to get to know people because while I had um, spent some time there at the end of schooling, by the end of my schooling, I wasn't really very rooted to the city. So I thought it would be a great way to find a community of like, you know, effective change makers. And again, like, you know, some of the hubs do absolutely incredible work. And even some of the people in the yeah. Calcutta hub are really running impressive projects of their own. You don't have to be a social worker to join the hub, but the hub's projects have to be social. Um, so my experience, so I joined the hub around, just before I started college, actually around 2017. Um, so what happened there was that basically, unlike other hubs, the Calcutta hub had basically four active people, <laughs> including myself. And it was a largely dead hub. Like, um, but again, me and the other three, we started building momentum, trying to run it. And the idea was that as shapers, you age out in, by the time you're 30. So um, you do kind of get to a point where um, you have to hand over to like a new group of fresh-faced young people. So our goal was always to recruit, find good people to, you know, build a culture of effectiveness. So, but what largely ended up happening was that we found two people and out of maybe 50 people to 40 people that, you know, applied to be, and we tested out, um, that actually ended up long term adding value to the projects. I mean, the, and the projects the hub are running now compared to being completely inactive when I joined. Yeah, I'm quite proud of because... You've got people running the Calcutta Clean Air campaign. Um, you've got, you know, some of the largest water conservation efforts in the city. You've got a lot of blood donation and climate, even during this whole, um, you know, the early stages of the lockdown. Uh, one of the shapers led up, was part of like a feeding people campaign yeah. that he basically organized. And they were for over a month feeding about 13,000 people a day. Oh, wow. Um, so the F, like the, there are amazing individuals in the hub, but one of the things I felt that was my goal with the hub was to sort of build a network or a community of people affecting change. Um, we found people that we already knew before the hub, yeah. but I don't think as a hub, we created anything beyond what we could have done in our individual capacities. So the value addition of just the Calcutta hub was only really the fact that it had the whole Global Shapers brand, et cetera, to it. And that has helped in the sense that, say, after Cyclone Umfund last year, we managed to raise um, for various like fundraising causes of over 10 or so lakhs very quickly for a lot of relief work. But yeah, it takes time to you know um, build a community like that. And I think the challenge with the Global Shapers was balancing, say, a big voluntary commitment like that and starting my own company was one where I do think the Global Shapers ended up suffering in the end. In terms of uh, what you were able to take away from the Global Shapers and 
is there and i'm sure which our listeners would have experienced as well if they've tried to involve themselves in any social venture and i can definitely relate to what you're saying but it's it's quite difficult getting people involved and getting them to uh, actually understand the ethos of what you're trying to do and fully immerse themselves in it did did you find that any skills you learned during trying to attract people for global shapers helped you build your team during college labs or any general skills to attracting people i think one thing that yeah that i think sam came to develop from global shapers and college lab sort of being projects i was working on side by side was that there was a strong synergy between how a lot of the global shapers projects um the people in the hub wanted to work on and people with a lot more social experience than i did were focused on impact in the long term over the short term So one of the things that sort of translated between that perspective and my perspective with work is for us to also think about impact and how to manage it at scale. So uh for example like last year we reached a standpoint where you know obviously um as a business we were doing well we had a lot of students and parents wanting to get on board with us. and we took a call that we would set a hard cap on the number of students we take each year and if and we do it on a basis which was essentially somewhat selective but largely you know first come first serve if you met certain working style and academic yeah. parameters we take you and that's it for the year and while obviously there were a lot of concerns about unfairness and um lack of access to services we realized that a large part of our service is based on having direct access to your mentor on a regular basis and not you know Definitely. seeing them once and then not for two more months and a lot of the skill development programs have very hard caps on them so you can't teach them with you know groups of 40 or 50 kids it's easier to do in a more socratic 6 <coughs> to 10 person setting so for us even that was a big decision that piled on Uh, was how what kind of company do we want to be um do we want to be the company that has the most families and schools and students working with us or do we want to have a reputation of just say working with a small niche but achieving a very long term you know value addition for those families and then figuring out how to scale slowly rather than quickly yeah well wow, that that's quite interesting about figuring out what your identity is as a team and as an individual both in terms of your uh, company and in terms of global shapers